In this video, we will focus on creating transparent materials such as different glass types and liquids. Alright, the first glass material I'm going to create will be for the outer shell of this USB cable and the color of this material will change depending on the thickness of the mesh. So let's see how we can set that up. Alright, let's start by creating a new VRA standard material. Now, similar to the metallic materials from our previous video, glass shaders don't really need information from the diffuse layer for their color. So let's disable the diffuse channel by making it a pure black color and then move on to the reflection layer. For this particular glass, I really don't have a preference for the color of the reflections. So for now let's just pick a white color and move on. I will also slightly lower the reflection glossiness to something around 0.98 just so we don't have a perfectly polished look. I will also leave the lock index of reflection checkbox on since we are going to use the refraction layer and we can control this value from there. Alright, let's move on to setting up the refraction layer. Think of the color swatch here as a slider that activates or deactivates the refraction. Values closer to white make your material more refractive and see-through. So let's make it completely transparent and move on. I want to be able to see clearly through the shader, so I won't lower the glossiness value. But let's change the index of refraction value. Higher values will make the effect more pronounced especially on the edges of the geometry. So a value around 2 will be just fine for our glass now. Now let's do a quick test render and see how our glass looks so far. Ok great. Lastly, we need to introduce some coloring for this shader. Let's see how we can do that using the fog color. I will choose a rather saturated shade of yellow. and increase the fog multiplier value to around 2 to make the color more visible. The fog bias value determines how to distribute the color over the mesh or to put it simply it controls where the color should be more visible or not. For this particular mesh a value around minus 2.5 will work great since I want to make sure the coloring is mostly visible on the thick parts of the geometry. Let's do a render and see how our colored glass material appears now. Great, let's move on to our second shader. We are going to create a specific architectural glass type, commonly referred to as silkscreen glass. Basically we will set up a pattern on a glass surface and that pattern could be anything you want. Alright, as always, let's start with the diffuse layer. This will be the overall color for our pattern, which will make more sense once I load in the pattern textures. For now, we can leave it on the default off-white color. Let's move on to the reflections and enable them by changing the color to white. I will also load in a texture I prepared into the glossiness slot. This way, we will achieve a nice randomization making certain parts look blurry while other parts will appear perfectly shiny. Alright, let's now enable the refraction layer and set up the parts where we want our pattern to be visible. For that we are going to use the same texture from the reflection slot and simply feed it as a source for the refraction channel as well. This way the black and white values in the texture will work like a mask for our refraction layer, leaving only certain parts to be see-through where the texture is white or a shade of grey. Remember, pure black means we have no refraction for that particular area. Ok, let's complete this shader by adding a bit of bumpiness. Let's load in the texture. and lower the amount quite a bit.
All right, now let's apply the shader to the geometry and do a test render. Great. Now we can move on and create our final refractive shader, a water material. This one is pretty commonly used and very easy to set up. Once again, we start by deactivating the diffuse layer and start working on our reflections. I will choose a value near to pure white, something around 90%. Alright, now let's go into our refraction color and do the same. The only other value we need to change here is the index of refraction. And for water type materials, a value typically around 1.33 is going to work nicely. Let's do another test render and see how that looks. Great. Now we can finish off this material by adding just a tiny bit of color. Let's navigate to the fog channel and choose a nice shade of blue. Just make sure to enter a small amount in the saturation field since this parameter is fairly sensitive. Now let's render again and see the final result for our water material. All right. Now that we have seen how to set up a few different transparent material types, let's move on and continue exploring some other features in the upcoming lessons.